Hello and welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to discuss a fun topic, Darren. It's organic matter. And you might say, oh man, why do I need to know about that? But organic matter is so important. There are literally thousands of dollars worth of organic matter down in many soils. We want to explain that today. We're standing out in some corn stalks, Brian. We're going to talk about continuous corn. And we can see one of the obvious challenges right here is dealing with this residue. But there's a lot of things that go into continuous corn and being successful. We'll outline some of those things for you. Well, if you're going to be successful in any environment, you've got to control our Weed of the Week. We'll tell you how to do it on your farm coming up later in the show, but first, here's this week's Farm Basics. Farm Basics is brought to you by the Liberty Link Trait and Liberty Herbicide from Bayer. The most reliable weed management solution, Liberty Link and Liberty Herbicide are the link to efficient row crop production and sustainable weed management. During our Farm Basics time today, we wanted to discuss the purpose of shelter belts or tree belts on the farm. Well, I'm certainly feeling one of those purposes today, Brian. It's kind of a windy day. We've got a nice shelter belt along the side of us, and uh, it's not windy out here where we're filming. Well, honestly, just so you know, this is one of the big things when we do film Ag PhD. We're not spending millions of dollars on some elaborate production set. We try to go near shelter belts if it's windy, so we have wind protection. We, we just can't have lots of wind when we're filming the show. That's called old school, Brian. We just <laughs> go old school. Well, for farmers, they like to have tree belts around their farm places to try and stop winds, especially the winds in the winter that can get bitterly cold in the upper Midwest. So you'll see a lot of farmers with tree belts on the north side of their farms and on the west sides of their farms. That way it holds that northwest wind back. It's going to be blowing in all winter long and it allows that sunshine to get in from the south and the east. Well it also will hold back the snow when the snow does come. That will build up in the shelter belt and then you get your snow banks right around the shelter belt rather than right in your driveway. Well one of the things that we saw Brian on some of our travels around the world uh, in Ukraine a few years back we noticed all all these tree belts around you know most every field had a tree belt around it and that was their solution to fighting the weather in the dirty 30s they didn't want to see that erosion problem again and so the government just ordered that everyone plant trees around their field so that's what they did yeah you know one thing I've noticed too over the years a lot of farmers will complain about having shelter belts right near their field because sometimes the trees fall down like uh, there's a tree just about right in front of us that fell down and obviously then it has to get cleaned up or also you get branches sometimes that will hang out over i know even in our operation we wrecked an auger on a combine one time because the tree was hanging out over the field our guy wasn't paying attention and uh, probably did five thousand dollars worth of damage so those things happen but the positive of having that shelter belt there is not just the fact that you don't have as much wind erosion but in a windy area of the country like where we're at in South Dakota there's wind blowing every day next to the shelter belt where there's not so much wind the plants actually get a little taller and sometimes yield a little more. Well the other thing right along those tree belts you'll see the cattle will hang out if they're out grazing the stalks or if there's a pasture right alongside the tree belt they get a little bit of shade out of that hot summer sun they get a little protection out of the wind. There are many positives about having tree belts out around your farm or around your fields. Yep yeah, but another one of the negative things is just the fact that as tall as a tree is you can figure it's going to have roots out at least that far. So let's say you had a really tall shelter belt next to your field. Let's say that some of those trees were 60 feet tall. Okay, well that means those roots are going to be 60 feet out and if your crop is within 30 feet, let's call it, of your shelter belt, well now you know you're going to have roots from the trees going into your crop field 30 feet that could pull moisture away and in a dry year that could be a very bad thing. Well there certainly are some drawbacks to any good thing. There's nothing that's just or there's very few things I should say <laughs> that are all good. Otherwise everybody would say well wow we all have to have that. Tree belts have their pros and have their cons but for the most part we really like having tree belts especially around farm places. It gives you that protection from snow, from wind, those kind of things, from weather conditions. But we also like them on the edges of fields. It's not a bad thing to slow that wind down a little bit and help prevent erosion. All right, let's uh, just have a couple quick tips, Darren, on if you were going to start a brand new shelter belt, what would you do? A lot of people in our area, for example, will call the NRCS, the government office, and they'll actually come out and plant trees for you for a pretty reasonable fee. But beyond that, what are you going to do to establish these trees? Well, one of the things that we like to do before we plant trees is we like to put down a rate of a herbicide for most tree species. Treflan has been fairly safe. If you're using some Treflan, let's just say you're planting around the edge of a soybean field. If you had Treflan, 
on where you're going to plant the trees. Our experience has been the trees haven't died. Now that may or may not be labeled. So you have to check that out. We don't want you to do anything that's off label, but we have done some treff land in between tree rows. That's been a real safe product for us. We like to put a row of bushes or something fast growing around the outside row of the tree belt. That way it gives some protection to the small trees on the inside row. The other thing to plan for is leave plenty of space between the trees. So find out how much they're going to spread out. Leave that much space. And I know it looks when you're planting little trees, oh wow, I don't really need to leave 30 feet in between trees. But with some species, you may need to leave even more than 30 feet so when they grow up, they can reach their full potential. The first few years of establishing a tree belt are obviously the most difficult and they're the most important. So you want to make sure you're keeping weeds out of there. You can go spray Roundup in your tree belts too, as long as you keep the Roundup off the trees. And then besides that, water them. I know Darren and I used to haul around lots of water when we were getting tree belts established. You got to water those things on a very regular basis. Well, a year like this year was pretty tough to establish a new tree belt. <laughs> yeah. And again, it's a good time where you could say, wow, I'm sure glad I had that tree belt around the place to give us a little shade and a little protection from that hot summer sun. Well, one of the things you may have needed protection from on your farm was our Weed of the Week. Can you identify this week's weed? Everything is better to the power of Nutrisphere in. Proven to shield against leaching, volatilization, and denitrification, Nutrisphere N Nitrogen Fertilizer Manager helps you maximize the efficiency of your nitrogen applications. In fact, research shows that in 184 corn trials, Nutrisphere N increases yields by an average of 13.2 bushels per acre. Do the math for yourself. Contact your local fertilizer dealer today and take your operation to the power of Nutrisphere N. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit FarmLogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Hey Brian, it's Farm Guy. What brings you to our farm? I watch Ag PhD every week and know that you guys do a lot of field testing. We test a lot of products here and when something works, we use it on our farm. Oh, like agriculture liquid fertilizers. Yeah. You guys started talking about ProGerminator and SureK on the show a few years ago. But I was skeptical. You're always skeptical. Should Brian be skeptical of agro liquid fertilizers? Find out at www.farmguytv.com. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. For lower costs and higher production, come to your Mandaco dealer. Ask about the best production built land roller on the market. Mandaco, simple design for easy transport and easy use. 12 to 62 foot widths, heavy duty 4x8x3 inch tube frame and now available with a steerable wing wheel. Mandaco land rollers, improved soil to seed contact, faster more uniform germination, less moisture loss. Eliminate downtime due to rocks. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Well, Brian, we're in this field. We've got lots of organic material on top yep. of the ground, but we're going to talk about organic matter that's actually in the soil. Yeah, a lot of people get confused with this. Organic material is all this residue that's out here before it breaks down. Once it's decomposed, then it is organic matter. And the percentage of organic material can be pretty high on top of your ground. You say, oh my goodness, there's all kinds of organic material. By the time that all breaks down, decomposes, there's not a lot of actual organic matter left. In most soils, you'll find three to 4% organic matter, but I've seen many fields that have been down to 1% organic matter or less, and also a whole bunch of fields that are 7% or higher. And we wanna talk about the importance of organic matter today and what you can do to change it on your farm. One thing about 2012 that was interesting across the country is wherever I went, farmers said you could sure tell the difference between good ground 
and poor ground in yep. our area. The good ground held on a lot longer, even in the areas where they got virtually no rain at all. In those good ground or good fields, the crop held on for a lot longer and gave you a chance to catch some rain later on in the season and hopefully save a crop. Now, in some cases where they had marginal rain, it made the difference between getting a decent crop and getting a really poor crop. It makes so much of a difference if you can have a good level of organic matter in the soil. That's one of the ingredients in having a good soil. Okay, so one of the reasons why it's important is for every 1% of organic matter you have, you have approximately 4% more water holding capacity. In other words, let's say you've got a 2% soil and a 5% organic matter soil. The difference is 3%. So that 5% soil can hold about 12% more water. Okay, big thing in a drought year. But in addition to that, just think of it like a sponge. Okay, when you've got lots of organic matter out there, it's like a sponge, so you're gonna end up with less compaction. You're gonna have better overall soil tilt. Everything is gonna go better in addition to that water holding capacity. One of the things I look at, Brian, is the free nutrient release that we're gonna get out of organic matter. Yep. When we look at a soil that has high levels of organic matter, we're gonna get quite a bit of nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur, and other things that are gonna come available free through mineralization each summer. So as we get plentiful moisture and heat, uh, we had the heat this year, but we didn't <laughs> necessarily have the moisture. Uh, but we're gonna get nutrients like nitrogen. For each percentage of organic matter in your soil, you're gonna get approximately 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen for free every year. So let's just say that you had 5% organic matter soils, that's 100 to 150 pounds of free nitrogen you're gonna get. It's the same thing with phosphorus. You're gonna get four to seven pounds per acre from each 1% of organic matter you have in your soil. So you're gonna get four to seven pounds of phosphorus. So if you had a 5% organic matter soil, that's 20 to 35 pounds of phosphorus. And you're also gonna get some sulfur two or three pounds of sulfur for each percentage of organic matter. Well, that can be a big thing when you start putting numbers behind what a pound of each one of those nutrients is worth. That organic matter makes your soil worth a lot of money. Yep, that's right. When I run it in our operation, for example, I figure if I can buy ground that has a lot more organic matter, that could be worth thousands of extra dollars per acre on that particular land auction. Now, unfortunately, most farmers don't look at soil test numbers, don't look at what organic matter is before they buy ground, I would just encourage you to do that, and I'd encourage you to run some numbers, but you start figuring out what nutrients are worth, what water holding capacity is worth, it's a big deal if you have lots of organic matter out there. All right, so we know that it's worth some money to have more yeah. organic matter out in your soil, so why don't all soils have more? How did we get depleted to start with? Okay, well, tillage is probably the number one destroyer of organic matter over time. And this is one of the things too where I often was confused by this because you say, all right, let's say I'm in continuous corn, for example, and I'm just gonna do massive tillage and turn it black. I've got all this organic material here. Why doesn't that just turn into organic matter and how am I gonna deplete my soil? Well, you would like a nice slow breakdown of this material, but if you wanna just burn it all up fast, you want it all breaking down really quickly, then you mix soil with residue because everybody knows you're throwing bacteria, mixing that bacteria all over your residue. When you add fertilizer into the mix, now you have all the tools there for rapid breakdown of organic material. You have the bacteria that are going to break it down. You have some nitrogen. You have a high carbon corn stalk, oftentimes 60 parts of carbon to one part nitrogen. Well, once you add that nitrogen and tillage to the fuel, yeah, you're just gonna burn that up really quickly. Yeah, well, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference why it happens, it's just the fact is, if you do lots of tillage, you're going to deplete your organic matter over time. We wanna build organic matter. We wanna make our soils more sponge-like, with better water holding capacity, more ability to release nutrients. One of the most important things that you need to do is reduce tillage. That doesn't mean you have to go no-till, but you gotta reduce tillage. All right, but how are you gonna do that, Brian? Because you look at where the organic matter is the highest in our soils, it's the highest in the top few inches. And when you get some erosion, that's the best stuff that's leaving your field. Yeah, but we're not going to have as much erosion if we do less tillage. So we want to do less tillage. We want to put tile in the field. We want to use some high organic material crops like corn and wheat in our rotation. Do things that'll help reduce the erosion. All right, now here's the other thing, and we, we'll talk about it. It's fertilizer. When you're using high rates of nitrogen fertilizer out in your field, you're going to burn up some, some well, organic I'll material. Well, you, you have to use your head. If you're raising 200 bushel corn, don't put 500 pounds of nitrogen out. Exactly. I, I mean, as long as you're using things in balance at the right ratio and the right amounts, you aren't going to have any big issue with that. I'm not worried about it. But again, I want to come back to you've got to uh, reduce tillage and guys will say, oh boy, I'm in continuous corn or I'm in corn soybean rotation even. I got to till up these stalks. No, you don't. Use a chopping corn head. Like in these stalks right here, I mean, there was 200 bushel corn right in this area right here. And after just a month after harvest, I mean, there's almost, I mean, there's some left, but there's not nearly that much left compared to the guys that didn't use the chopping corn head. So do that. 
And then besides that, you've got to make sure you have some nitrogen out here for breakdown. A lot of guys will spray nitrogen right out on these stalks in the fall. That'll help them break down. And come spring, you don't have that much left, especially if you do some strip till in the fall. We really like strip till right in between these stalks. Well, the big thing I'm concerned about, Brandon, when we talk about tillage out here, I'm not so worried about the strip till causing issues because I'm not tilling up the root ball. That's where you run into issues. Yep. If you can leave that root ball intact, people forget there's just as much residue below the ground with corn as there is above ground. So if we can just leave that root mass intact, that's the most important thing. Now, if we can leave some of the stuff on top, that's great. And it's going to work its way down with earthworms and other things. But it, when we're doing that tillage, we can leave the root mass intact. We're going to be in good shape. Yep. I read a study from University of Minnesota Morris. It was like a 30 year study. And what they found is even if you were cutting silage, you didn't reduce your organic matter that much as long as you didn't till up the roots. If you leave the roots intact, that's where a lot of your organic matter builds from. Oh, there's one other thing there too, Brian. It's manure applications. If you have access to yep. manure, that's one of the things that back in the days when we were real small farms and everybody had a little bit of livestock around and you'd spread manure on every acre, that was fantastic for the ground. Now we've got larger farms, but we also have larger livestock facilities as well. So if you're fortunate enough to be around a, a large poultry barn or a large cattle or hog operation, get that manure out on your ground. It's going to help you build up organic matter over time. Well, once again, organic Organic matter is very important. Do what you can to build it and not destroy it on your farm. And long term, you're going to make your ground worth a lot more money and you'll raise a lot better crops. One other thing that will help improve crop production is weed control. We'll show you how to control this tough weed later in the show. Why do more farmers choose Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn Blend? For maximum yield protection. With two powerful ways to control above ground insects like corn earworm, corn borer, and fall armyworm. Plus convenient refuge in a bag with 95% traded seed and 5% refuge seed. That's simplicity. That's Genuity VT Double Pro Rib Complete Corn. The number one choice of farmers. You can't fill a barrel any fuller than its lowest stave. And your crops can't do any better than the nutrient that's in shortest supply. Your yield potential is only as good as the weakest nutrient in your fertilizer program. Give your crops more than just NPK. Prescription apply all the micronutrients your crop needs. Each one customized for your crop's potential. Microlink, linking yield to potential. Back in 1966, Advanced Drainage Systems, Inc. was the first company to start manufacturing plastic agricultural drainage pipe in the United States. And today, ADS continues our leadership with superior pipe production and service capabilities. Our roots are firmly entrenched in the agriculture industry, and we're committed to helping farmers grow their business. With 54 manufacturing plants and 24 distribution yards throughout the world, you can count on ADS and our green-striped pipe to be there when you need us. Advanced Drainage Systems, the green-striped pipe you can count on. Looking to maximize yield? Quickroots is a microbial seed inoculant that allows the plant root to explore a greater volume of soil, the key to higher yields. Quickroots continues to generate yield response on corn, soybeans, wheat, and more. Quickroots is applied to the seeds so the live microorganisms go right to work, enhancing seedling vigor, increasing the uptake of certain nutrients, including NPK, and expanding root volume. Maximize yield on your farm this season. Call TJ Technologies or your local dealer and get your quick roots today. Harvest season will soon be over, but don't put away your equipment until you bring it into Titan Machinery, your Case IH dealer. Take advantage of our Uptime Maintenance Program. Uptime is Titan's preventative maintenance service designed to eliminate costly downtime during the short working season. Our technicians average more than 10 years of experience and use a comprehensive checklist to find problems before they slow you down. Call Titan Machinery today to schedule your Uptime service so you can spend the winter worry-free. Titan Machinery and Case IH, better solutions. You know, on our farm, we started to raise quite a bit of continuous corn. This is going back 10, 12 years ago because we had a couple pieces of ground that didn't have a lot of organic matter, and I said the best way to build that is we want to plant more continuous corn, reduce tillage, and all those things we just talked about a few minutes ago. But the downside, and what our dad told us is, well, this is all gonna look good until you get some dry year, and then in the dry year, continuous corn is gonna kill you, because continuous corn is gonna suck more moisture out than a corn soybean rotation or corn wheat rotation. Well, you can say that, but I think the biggest challenge for most guys trying to raise continuous corn is fertilizer. It's just trying to get that fertility program right. And the problem that we run into is, we have all this residue out there that's 60 parts carbon to one part nitrogen. We need 
need to get a bunch more nitrogen out there to try and help break down some of that residue. We need that ratio of carbon to nitrogen to be down in the 12 or 13 to one. So we have to put on a little bit extra nitrogen. We're talking about 50 pounds per acre more than we normally would in a corn on soybean rotation. Yep, and maybe even a little bit more than that. The other thing is the timing of when this is gonna be done. So in the fall, a lot of times if, let's say you had a corn crop that barely had enough nitrogen to make the yield it made, then your stalks, your residue that's left at the end of the season doesn't have a lot of nitrogen. You might want to go out and spray some liquid nitrogen on to help break those stalks down. Whatever you can do to get less organic material on top of the ground in the seed bed is probably going to help because that's the other big thing when it comes to planting continuous corn. If you don't have a good seed bed, you know you're not going to have a good stand, which means you can't have great yield. It's not like soybeans where you can just throw a bunch of seeds out there and for the most part they're going to well, grow, they're going to compensate. they a little bit. Right. Yeah, that's true. Yep. Corn, corn is going to just, here it is, it's one stalk, it's straight up, it's not going to bush out and fill in a three foot gap like a soybean plant. Yeah, so we used to raise some continuous corn in no-till and it was fine except for the soil didn't warm up very well in the spring. So then what we went to is strip till and found the ground warmed up very nicely in the spring, but still we had some problems with longer stalks and hair pinning residue. So now what we've gone to is chopping corn heads. When we have chopping corn heads out there, all the stalk pieces are really pretty small. They can be moved easily with the trash whippers and we have much better stands. Well, that's nice, but the other challenge is just getting those row cleaners to push the residue off to the side enough that our gauge wheels can slip through without bouncing up and down over residue. That's where we end up with some unevenness in planting depth. And we still see that occasionally on our farm. We're getting better at this, but you wanna make sure you push that residue off to the side. Cause yes, that chopping corn head's nice. We can manage those small chunks of residue, but we are gonna to have to push them out of the way a little bit. Cause there are gonna be a few that blow over that strip that we built last fall. There'll be a few pieces that blow over that by the springtime. So we'll clear that away at planting time. Make sure our gauge wheels are running nice and smooth on soil. That way we have a good, even planting depth and we'll have much more successful corn. Well, once again, with continuous corn, we do get a little concerned because it might be a little drier. And so in a dry year, you could have some issues potentially, but if you build up your organic matter, you know you're gonna have more water holding capacity and pick the right varieties that will withstand continuous corn conditions. And then of course, put a little more nitrogen on. Well, we didn't get to talk much about weeds there, Brian, but we will during our Weed of the Week segment coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Mandaco. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. See your Mandaco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Oh, right by a tree belt, Brian, and it's probably a good thing because our Weed of the Week wild cucumber is one that's really the biggest problem when it gets into a tree belt. Yeah, what'll happen is this viney plant will extend around your trees, and it's basically trying to take the sunlight away from your tree, and you'll sometimes see 30, 40, 50 feet of vine in a tree. I know I've just literally pulled that many feet out of some of our trees. So, in other words, I wasn't doing the very best job for weed management there, dear. No, no, no. You know, we talk a lot about... <laughs> have to catch weeds when they're small with wild cucumber. If you catch it down on the ground, you can wipe it out with a low rate of 2,4-D and do a pretty good job. Yeah, but the problem is then you're going to drop some leaves off the trees. So you've got to spray in the fall and in the early spring, even before you know you have the wild cucumber problem. Otherwise, in season, there's not a lot you can do that's very safe for the trees. Yeah, otherwise, like you say, you're out there with hand labor, pulling all the vines off yep. and then spraying stuff down on the ground. Oh, one last thing on our Weed of the Week, Darren, peepos and tendrils. <laughs> Just a couple of the... Uh, oh, there's so many scientific terms yeah. to describe little parts of each one of these plants. That Yeah, we could get into some of that detail, but <laughs> honestly, you know, we want this to be user-friendly for you where you say, oh, okay, I understand. I see what that is. I don't have to know all the... The uh, fruiting parts and everything else. Yeah. So anyway, our weed of the week is wild cucumber. It's mainly a problem in shelter belts. You can use 2,4-D to get in under control, preferably when the trees do not have their leaves on. So spray in the late fall and the early spring. Well, that's all time we have for this week's weed, but Iron Talk is coming up next. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. AFS is less complex and built right into our equipment. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? 
today's Iron Talk, we're going to talk about residue breakdown in the field and one of the successful things that we did this fall on our farm. We're extremely happy with how our strip till turned out this fall on our farm. One of the things that we did a little bit different, we used a chopping corn head everywhere across the farm this year to try and get the size of our residue down. Now in the past, we'd end up with some great big pieces of residue like this. And you think about it, when it lays across the row and your planter's gonna try and run across that, it's trouble in the spring. Also in the fall for a strip till machine, chances are, the stock may still have a little moisture to it and it won't cut as well in the fall. So we really like the chopping corn head for getting rid of those great big pieces of residue. But the other thing that we liked about this fall in our strip till is how quickly our residue degraded. Now part of that is because we had an early harvest. We were all done by October 1st on our farm. But the other part of it is with the chopping corn head, we've now got smaller pieces of residue and a lot of the pieces have a nice angle cut across them, exposing more surface area for bacteria to break the residue down. So we're seeing quicker breakdown and also better flow through on our strip till machine. So we're really happy with how our residue is breaking down this fall. That's all for today's Iron Talk and now back to the show. For lower costs and higher production, Mandaco leads with versatility unmatched. Twister is the vertical tillage unit for no-till as well as conventional tillage. Twister's ease of maintenance is forgiving in rocks and has contour conformity equaling zero downtime. Our hydraulically adjusted coulter angles make residue management easier and less costly. Spring or fall, the Mandeco Twister vertical tillage unit is the new leader. See your Mandeco dealer. Visit northcountrymarketing.biz or call 877-915-8790. Speed, strength, and efficiency make Capello corn heads a head above the rest. Built with polymer components that exceed industry standards, Capello corn heads continue to push the boundaries for maximizing grain retention while using less energy. Visit CapelloUSA.com and learn more about Capello's state-of-the-art chopping technology that cuts cleaner, allowing your horsepower to remain where it belongs, with your combine, so you can harvest faster in all weather conditions. Add to that an amazing folding feature and it's clear to see why Capello is ahead above the rest. For years, FarmLogic has been the easiest and most convenient way to keep up with your farming operations. Well, it just got better. Introducing FarmPad for your phone. You always have your phone with you, so entering records as they happen is as easy as a touch of a button. Chemical database, GPS, service records, and more. When you do it on the farm, Save it on your phone and it's backed up forever. Call or visit farmlogic.com for a free trial and find out why FarmLogic is the best decision tool for the farm. Advanced farming systems from Case IH helps producers be ready. Our precision farming solution is less complex and built right into our equipment. Factory integrated with open architecture, AFS works with all of your implements, no matter what color they are. And our team of dedicated specialists are here to keep you rolling 24-7, 365. The world of farming is changing. Will you be ready? I'm ready. Closed captioning for Ag PhD is sponsored by Norwood Sales. Introducing the all new Backsaver Swing Hopper Auger Mover. Backsavers have interchangeable parts which allows you easy access to move or swing your augers to fit your harvesting needs. Get yours today at Norwood Sales. That's all the time we have for today's show, but be sure to join us again next time for another Weed of the Week Iron Talk, Farm Basics, and a whole lot more. I'm Brian Hefty. And I'm Darren Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD. Plants actually tell farmers what nutrients they need. They don't do it verbally, but farmers get the information through plant tissue analysis. It's another way farmers practice responsible nutrient management. To learn more, visit rnmf.org.